exhibit yesterday, because I saw the sign. And it says here, in English and Italian, but it said, it's about hats in the cinema. And it says, think of how many film icons have used hats. You can actually read it here. <laughs> have, have used hats to make themselves more recognizable on screen, from Laurel and Hardy to the Blues Brothers, from Humphrey Bogart to John Wayne, from Freddy Krueger to Dick Tracy, and it goes on and on. And then it said, um, how could we possibly imagine Indiana Jones without his widely brimmed hat? And I knew I had to go see the exhibit because my wife is the costume designer of the Blues Brothers and of Raiders of Lost Star. So I went to the exhibit and it's really good. So I recommend it. Burke and Hare sí. is a true story. Robert Louis Stevenson wrote The Body Snatchers, which is based on that true story. Birkenham, my film, or the, whatever you call it in the town, is oh, okay. also based on that story, but it's not The Body Snatcher. Robert Wise made a great film with Boris Karloff called The Body Snatcher, which is based on the Robert Louis Stevenson story, which is based on Birkenham. <laughs> now I got it. I was a little confused oh, before. Okay. Yeah, yeah, now. <laughs> Do you know what it, in terms of icons, Again, we're going back to costume, but Deborah, my wife, when we, when we made the Blues Brothers, she actually said to me, she said, it's very important because she was trying to figure out the cut of the coats and the hats and all that. And she said that to be iconic, to, to be a memorable character, you must be able to recognize the character in the shadow, meaning the silhouette. And that's why if you look at Royal and Hardy, Charlie Chaplin, you know who they are by their shadow. Indiana Jones. You know, you know, you see their outline. You know who they are. And that was just very interesting to me because uh, she was right. <laughs> That's all. Unfortunately, uh, the filmmakers at the William Friedkin, the director, he said, only the projections has final cut. <laughs> but when a film goes around the world, you can't control it, and each individual distributor or studio around the country, around the country, around the world, you know, I've had films translated into Italian very badly, but I don't speak Italian, so I don't know, but he's the second one to say how good this is, so you have to thank Vanya for getting the right people. It's, it's difficult because a film like Working Hair, it's, it takes place in Scotland, so in fact they're all speaking English, but the Scots are speaking it with a Scottish accent. And then Burke and Hare are Irish, and they're not just Irish, they're Northern Irish. So there are a lot of accents going on in the movie that obviously completely lost them. It's translated in Italian, so it's a compliment to the dubber that uh, it works. It's strange, you know, language. Something that's in Italian when it's translated into English, it can be close, but it can never be the original, you know, total. So I'm thrilled that he, that he says it's good, so that's great. It's a compliment to the my favorite dubbing story is in France, an actor dubbed John Wayne. He did all of John Wayne, he did John Wayne, all of John Wayne movies since the 30s. And then when John Wayne won an Academy Award for True Grit, he said, the French actor said, I want more money. And Paramount said no, so he said, I will not do it. So they hired, him. They hired another actor. The movie came out in France and bombed because people said, that's not John Wayne. <laughs> they brought him back, they redubbed and paid him a lot of money. They released it a year later. It was a gigantic hit. <laughs> well, I always, I have a basic truth I work from, which I always think comedy, everything actually, but comedy especially, works better. You must set it in in the real <coughs> world. So, like Animal House was a period picture, 1962, and it's a very accurate period picture, clothes, costume, everything. And, it, and uh, even a movie like For Amigos, which is very silly, basically it looks really good. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's important. And we did go to a lot of trouble for this. It was hard because most of historic Edinburgh is gone. The Westport ghetto was gone. <coughs> very cleverly recreated without much money.
It's actually ahead. When I was here promoting, I was with the Metal Mutin promoting Oscar many years ago. And several people said, this is your first period film. And I thought, no. And I made a lot of period films. And when I told them, they went, ah, because it was a com they were comedies. So they didn't, you know, like they, it was funny to me. They didn't understand, you know, they just accepted it, which is the best. The truth is, you shouldn't see the work. You should just accept it. That's what it's good. But you know the hardest to do? Really? The hardest? For some people, the hardest is to do now, contemporary. Because people don't see it at all. I mean, like trading places. In trading places, the costumes in trading places are brilliant. But they're, they're they, you accept them as real. But like, you don't think that everything in the movie that was made, you know, for everybody, all the different, you don't think of them because it's a compliment, but at the same time, that's why when they give awards to costume designers, it's always in the, like in the past or science fiction, because it's costumes that are right here, everybody in this room chose what they wore today for a reason, and, and costumes are important, and it's just interesting, it's a lot of the stuff in film and theater that, that people don't think about. Well, you're not supposed to. Did you see The Wizard of Oz? The best line in movie history. Never mind that man behind the curtain.